This is the senior scholar at the Institute for Policy Studies, one of the really, truly great progressive think tanks out there, the director of the Institute for Policy Studies program on inequality and the common good, and the co-editor of inequality.org, the author of the new book, The Wealth Hoarders, Chuck Collins. And Chuck, welcome back to the program. It's, it's, it's been a while since we've talked, um, and so happy to have you back. Th this, this, uh, these papers, these pa they're be, you know, being coined the... Uh, no pun intended, the Pandora Papers. Uh, this is pretty shocking stuff. For people who haven't been following what's going on with the Pandora Papers, you want to start at the beginning and tell us what, what is going on, how, how this all came out, and what, what they tell us about the world's financial system and the, the morbidly rich. Yeah. Well, the Pandora par Papers are a result of a leak. Uh, and people may remember five and a half years ago, there was something called the Panama Papers, which was a leak out of one law firm in Panama that created all kinds of shell companies that the super rich used to sort of hide their money. Well, the Pandora Papers is a massive leak from 14 different kind of wealth service firms from around the world, and it, uh, it names names. It, you know, there's 360 major politicians from different countries. Um, it shows the sort of how the systems work, how the super rich kind of play shell games using anonymous shell companies and trusts and uh, offshore banking and the whole bit. But one of the biggest important findings is the United States is one of the biggest tax havens now. So billionaires and criminals bring their money to the United States and park it here because of our uh, weak transparency systems. It's, it's truly remarkable, South Dakota being at the top of that list. I want to dig into that. But uh, the two things that really surprised me as I was reading the reporting on this um, was, number one, that there were no American billionaires on there. I was, I was surprised, or, or even just, you know, mind-bogglingly wealthy individuals. Um, and is that because this is principally a scheme that was working for foreigners? Because there's certainly a lot of money being put into South Dakota. Yeah, uh, Tom, the reason we, not, we don't see a lot of U.S. names is because the wealth service firms that leak the money are not places where the super rich in the U.S. go. You know, they, they don't go to Cyprus or, um, you know, Belize to do their financial services. So these are all overseas uh, sources. So, yeah, so we don't have a leak from a U.S. wealth uh, advisory firm. I should say that would be really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. to helping explain how this really plays out in the United States. So if there's anybody working in those companies and they want to send me some information, I'm available. But, but in all seriousness, there's the, the super rich and billionaires from the U.S. use the same tools that are exposed here. They use offshore bank accounts. They use anonymous shell companies. They use trusts that are sort of rigged to favor the rich. Uh, they use all the same tools to protect and sequester their money and avoid taxes. So what is the, you know, to, to make this uh, understandable to the average person, because there's a lot of technical stuff here as well. Um, if, if somebody had, you know, a, a $100,000 nest egg, which is, you know, a big deal in, you know, for a middle class family or a person approaching retirement in America, you know, half of Americans more than half of Americans can't even deal with the $1,000 uh, expense. Um, but, but if somebody had a $100,000 nest egg and they could do what rich people do with it, truly rich people, or like, like these papers have revealed, what would they be doing versus what must they do because they're not a billionaire? Well, uh, chances are they, they, they can't do the same things that the billionaires are doing. I mean, we're talking about people who, who typically have wealth starting at about $30 billion. They hire what's called the wealth defense industry. They hire tax attorneys, accountants, wealth managers who help them navigate this global world. And, and those wealth managers have a lot of uh, expensive tools that they use to help the super rich kind of game the system. So, you know, I'm sorry to say that your $100,000 nest egg isn't going to, you're not going to be able to hire the kind of Yeah, that wouldn't even pay for the first at. first day's work from one of these wealth management companies. Yeah, that's my hourly rate, really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I get it. I totally get it. Um, so uh, tell me about South Dakota. Why South Dakota? Well, South Dakota, 
uh, made a decision in the 1980s that it was going to kind of uh, change its laws to attract the trust industry. Um, so, you know, wealthy representatives of some super wealthy families went to the governor of South Dakota and said, hey, if you uh, change this law that makes trusts have to dissolve after a certain period of time, we'll move all our money to South Dakota. You want to define a and trust real way, quickly here? Yeah, a trust is kind of like a ownership uh, uh, entity. It's just a way that wealth and assets can be held. But so it's, it's kind of like your money bin. <laughs> it's your money bin. It's a, it's a weird form in that it, um, you know, it's not like someone has a trust, they have to register it, or it's like a contract almost. You know, mm -hmm. you and I form a contract. So there's usually somebody who puts the money in the trust, there's somebody who's supposed to receive the money, and then there's somebody who's the trustee who oversees it. What these wealth defense industry people have done is they've kind of distorted and morphed the structure so that it puts the wealth into kind of limbo. Like, who owns it? Who, you know, can this be taxed? Can can that person, uh, you know, who who ripped off their customers, will they, how do we get the money back? You know, well, these trusts are, are designed to be impervious. So it's just an ownership system. It's complicated. But actually, it's at the heart of one of the things that's broken. We need to change trust law in the United States so these um, manipulations can't happen. But how do you do that when the Supreme Court has said that if billionaires want to own politicians, that's free speech, that's not corruption or bribery, and the billionaires don't want the trusts to go away? Yeah. No, I mean, we're obviously, uh, you know, up again. It's a heavy lift, as they say. But, first of all, the rest of the world now is going to be uh, kicking the U.S. rear on this topic because, you know, we've been going around saying, hey, you know, Guatemala, end your corruption. Hey, uh, Caribbean Island, stop being a tax haven. And now the U.S. is the tax haven. Right. Um, and so other countries are going to be saying to us, hey, you want to, you know, engage in a treaty with us uh, to get information from us? Well, clean up your house, clean up your act. Um, the other thing is that these, this, har this hidden wealth system really harms people it you know it's 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 the hospital that wasn't built it's the tax dollars that weren't paid by the super rich it's the coddling of the you know uh criminals and kleptocrats t who've stolen money from around the world and bringing it here to the u.s so we're like the getaway car drivers and it's fueling grotesque inequality so it, it it's harming the rest of society um so there is a counter, you know, the possibility of really building that countervailing power. Um, you know, a year ago, Congress passed something called the Corporate Transparency Act that requires shell companies to disclose who their real owners are to the Treasury Department. Well, that's a huge first step. Yeah. And we can follow that playbook and pass national laws that will shut down this hidden wealth industry. That is absolutely great. Chuck Collins, senior scholar at the Institute for Policy Studies, ips-dc.org. And uh, Chuck9921, T-O, digit one, is his uh, Twitter handle. Chuck, thanks so much for dropping by and, and telling us you all bet. about this. Explain it all. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. Okay, good talking with you.